So today uh, we're talking about language disorders. Now, language disorders are whenever there is a problem in the brain regarding the processing of linguistic information. Whenever that process processing is a problem, so that is called language disorder. Now we divide these language disorders into two types. Number one, uh, we call it receptive language disorder. And number two, we call it expressive language disorder. Now, whenever you are listening to a person and a person is talking to you and you are unable to recognize or your rate of recognition of that language is slow, when you are unable to recognize, that might be known as vernix aphasia. That is not a disorder. But when understanding that language, the rate of understanding that language is slow, that is called receptive language disorder. Similarly, whenever you are trying to produce language and in production of that language, your rate of producing that language is slow. You cannot produce that language as normal. So that is called expressive language disorder. So two main types. Next, we talk about the symptoms. Like what are the symptoms of these disorders? Say, uh, if somebody says that, what are the symptoms? No theorist, no neurological uh, theorist or expert has yet been able to define this thing. For example, what are the symptoms? There is no standard, but yes, still we can say that yes, there are some symptoms. For example, when we talk about receptive language disorders, it has certain symptoms. Number one, it seems as you as if the person is not interested to listen to something. Number two, it seems as if the person doesn't want to listen to whatever you are speaking to the person. And particularly uh, when it's a matter of children, so when you tell stories to children, it seems they're not interested in listening to that story or they skip certain parts of stories. For example, if a teacher is giving an assignment in the class and teacher gives certain instructions. Now some of the students, they, perhaps they have this receptive language disorder, but once the teacher departs, Afterwards, they ask others, so what did the teacher say? Is it handwritten or it is typed? How much? What? This and this. So they are asking all those questions again. Or for example, you are giving instructions to someone to your home that, well, my home is, you know, uh, go right, then turn left, then do this and then do instructions, basically. They cannot understand instructions. If, for example, somebody is uh, downstairs, right? and he wants to come upstairs to your room. So when you give instructions to the person, he will say, well, I'm coming to the third floor, and once I'm there, I'll call you again. Why? Because he has some you know, slow rate of understanding the language that you are uh, speaking to that person. Now, uh, slow rate of learning, and one thing more important, uh, which, which can be uh, present or which can be added in both these, and that is, that your language skills are below the level of your age mates. I mean, if you're in the eighth semester, so your language skills are not equal to your mates, rather your language skills may be uh, of the same, that is, say, a student in the second semester, or the first semester, or maybe an intermediate student, 12 year student. So language skills are below in understanding or in uh, expressing that language. So basically, you add one more thing. You cannot understand complicated sentences. For example, if I say, well, uh, you need to take that book, it's fourth chapter, and third stanza. So one is confused at times. Why? Because you're having that uh, problem of understanding. Similarly, in expressive language disorder, what happens? You cannot produce language well. Uh, say, you, you basically, you know, take time. In, in gathering the sounds you want to produce. You, while producing, you prolong certain sounds. While expressing language, uh, you cannot find a proper word. You give a lot of gaps. And at times, you produce a word which is not appropriate, rather it is inappropriate. 
but closer to that. Sometimes even people, the ones who are having this expressive language disorder, instead of using a proper word, they are using internets. And we have many examples like that. You basically substitute certain words, which are not appropriate. Okay. Uh, now, now there are certain uh, other diseases that we might see. For example, the very first disease is called sensory impairment. Sensory impairment, right? It's a, it's a language disorder. Uh, now these disorders, some of them will be receptive and some of them will be expressive. So very first one is sensory impairment. And as I told you, language disorders, they are also called language impairment. And once more I would like to reiterate, when you talk about Broca's aphasia, you cannot produce language. When you have Wernick's aphasia, you cannot understand language. But when you have expressive disorder, you produce language, but the rate is low. When you have receptive language disorder, you have uh, disorder, but you don't have the aphasia. You understand language, but the rate of understanding that language is slow. Now, in sensory impairment, basically, it is kind of an impairment. Uh, what we say, I mean, visual impairment or deafness. So both these are basically language disorders. If somebody is speaking to you, right, but you cannot see the person. So the verbal behavior is even, right? I mean, uh, if, if somebody uh, speaks to you and you cannot see that person, fine? So you cannot see basically how, I mean, when you look at somebody and somebody says, thank you, the facial expression tells how the person is saying thank you to you. So it is kind of an impairment. It's kind of a disorder that yes, you can understand, you can listen to people, but says you can you can't see whether they are sitting, whether they are dancing, whether they are standing, or what their facial expressions are, what their gesticulations are. That is very important in communication. Similarly, uh, the second part of this is deafness. When you cannot listen to people, whatever they say, that of course again is another impairment, but it might create problem in understanding the language and listening to people. And how you to, you can see them definitely, but you cannot make out what actually how actually they are uh, talking to you. So the second one uh, in this regard is called apraxia. Now apraxia basically uh, again it's a disease kind of stuff. When you your arm or when your leg has kind of a problem, so that is called apraxia. But in language disorders, we call it apraxia of speech. Now, apraxia of speech is again the rate of language production is very slow, and uh, there is uh, right with the Broca's area. You have your motor system. Motor system is the part which makes you speak, which controls your jaws, lips, teeth, the way you speak. So, whenever your motor system has an injury, you have this apraxia of speech. Now, in this one, your Broca is producing language. But your motor system is unable to express that language properly. The rate of production is slow. You cannot gather sounds to speak. And in this one, there is one thing more. Uh, kind of, uh, uh, say, it's called uh, oral apexia. I mean, you can also talk about oral apexia. Oral apexia is when you cannot imitate uh, actions. I mean, if you are learning karate, if you are, say, in law enforcement agencies, and then you have to go for certain, you know, exercises. So people, they cannot imitate. This is called oral, oral apexia. I mean, you know, in karate, you see they are doing certain this, 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 or certain movements. So you cannot imitate those movements. And in apexia of speech, you cannot imitate sounds properly. Right? And the rate of producing that language or producing those sounds is very slow. So that is called apexia. Second one, it's dyslexia. Now, this basically, uh, this means uh, impairment, dysfunction, deficiency, disease, problem, disorder. So, dyslexia. Dyslexia basically, uh, it is mostly common in children. And in dyslexia, uh, you cannot recognize letters. You cannot recognize letters properly. The Almighty has created us in such a way our eyes are like, you know, camera. 
सेल्फी कैमरा वेन यू टेक अल्फी थिंग्स गो दिन फ्लिप I mean, if you are standing like this, this is your right hand. So selfie shows it is your left hand, and that is your right hand. It's the other way round. So, but when it goes to the occipital lobe, here you watch things as they are. So in dyslexia, basically, children they they take time. They they take time. It's hard for them to understand whether it is B or it is D. So when they write, instead of writing S, they write S. Instead of writing three, they write three. Instead of writing nine, they write nine. So why they cannot recognize words basically properly? So because of that, they make a lot of mistakes. Fine. For example, when they want to write sir, so they write it like this. Maybe this is S and this is I and this is R. Now again, it's kind of a neurodevelopmental order. When children, while they are learning, they cannot recognize words. Now it it happens both in reading as well as in writing. Uh, I don't know. Once I bought a tennis ball, so all of you know well. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to basically propagate or advertise this, but Adidas. I want to buy a ball, so there was a, a ball. So when I bought that ball and I went home, so I saw it was not D, it was B, Adidas. So why there was a confusion? So this is how you know things are maneuvered at times. So you cannot recognize words properly. And those children, let let me tell you one thing more. Uh, all family members are not equal. We all have individual differences. If one of your siblings is stopping the class, maybe you are not. But it doesn't mean that you should be neglected. It doesn't mean that you should be ignored. Even those people who cannot perform well, they need more encouragement. They need to be given more and more time so that they would also improve themselves. So, uh, in this one, basically, children they cannot recognize words, so they need more and more practice so that they are able to do like that. While reading, they read the otherwise, and while writing, they write the otherwise. So there are certain movies as well, so you can watch them where these kind of issues have been addressed. The next one uh, 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 language disorder is sorry, I'll uh, use that as well. Dyslexia, and the next one is dysgraphia. This again impairment graphia in writing. Now you might be saying that in dyslexia there is also writing. Yes, but that is for letters. When you see the letters the other way, okay. But in this area, it is kind of an impairment where children and students they can not write. How? Writing means they have problems in writing, generating sentences as well as particularly coherence. I mean, when they write, there is no coherence. Maybe they are missing certain discourse markers. Maybe they are missing certain connectors, or maybe they are unable to develop a connection between paragraphs or between sen among sentences. So this is called dysgraphia when they are having problems in basically writing certain texts, or it may have uh, you know uh, morphological problems. There can be there can be lexical issues. Even there can be structural problems or grammatical issues as well while they are writing. Maybe they are making certain mistakes. Maybe they are. Uh, Having a muddled uh, sentence structure and all that, so that is that might known as uh, dysgraphia. Then we have stuttering. Now, stuttering and stammering almost the same. Stuttering and stammering. Stuttering is uh, when you have problems in producing sounds. Uh, for example, you prolong certain sounds. For example, what what are you doing? So this what what what? I mean, you are repeating and prolonging. Repeating and prolonging, then you know uh, I'll do this. So this is basically kind of stuttering. And some people say that maybe it is because of genetics, but that is one variable uh, being a part of gen genetics because of genetics. But some people they call it maybe you might have had kind of trauma in past. Maybe you met uh, you might have met an accident or because of certain medicine. And some people say that because of frustration, it also happens. But there is one thing which is very, very clear: because of stuttering, the quality of life is affected. I mean, people, their quality of life is affected at times. And also, stuttering is also one of the expressive language disorders. Then, 
there are a few more diseases. Uh, one of them I'm like to talk about right now is ADHD. Right? ADHD. Oh my God, if I tell you, you will feel as if you are also a victim of the same. ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Two things. One, you cannot focus on things. Attention deficit. You are in the class, you are doing like this, but you are in your kitchen, but you are somewhere in the park, you are with your friends. You cannot attend. Whenever you are told certain things, you cannot conceive them properly. Why? Because you lose attention. You cannot focus, in short. And secondly, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is when you cannot control your behavior. I mean, you do a lot of things. Right? Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Now, symptoms, for example. In attention deficit, uh, if you're sitting somewhere and people are telling you certain things, you don't listen to them. You do not attend them properly. You listen, but you don't actually conceive the idea. You are somewhere else. You are not sitting there. Whenever instructions are given to you, you don't understand them. And here there is one more disease, echolalia. E-C-H-O-L-A-L-I-A. Echolalia is parroting words. If you are asked to do multiple things, three or four things, for example, you are asked to uh, bring something from the kitchen, then bring a book from the library, and then bring you know a blanket from the room. So you start doing them. Uh, plate from the kitchen, book from the library, blanket from the room, plate from the kitchen, book from the library, blanket from the room. So you're parroting words. And at times you forget your ins own repeated instructions too. Right? So in attention deficit, you, you, you basically cannot focus on things. While uh, you are communicating with your friends, among your family members, you are sitting, but you're not sitting, you're sitting with them physically, but apparently you're not sitting with them. Similarly, in hyperactivity, uh, for example, you cannot focus, you cannot control your behavior. For example, you're doing multiple things. And one of the symptoms is if you're sitting in the classroom and the teacher is teaching you people. So while listening to the teacher, suddenly you remember something and you just speak to your class fellow. You see, uh, what is the next class? Have you done the assignment? Okay. And then again, you start listening to that. So whenever, I mean, uh, one thing more, you interrupt with people. It is also called impulsivity. I mean, these are the symptoms of impulsivity as well as a hyperactivity disorder that uh, you interrupt people while people are talking, you don't let them finish. And if you are playing a game, you say, when is my turn coming? You're very anxious for your turn. And uh, similarly, if you have something to say, you say it without any restraints. So these are basically certain impatient. You're very, very impatient. You want that, uh, why things are not taking place, why things are not happening. Particularly, you see there are certain children, I mean, they are hyperactive. In a way, uh, they will stand up, they'll go touch something, they'll go do something else, then they'll do something else, they'll come and sit. And if you want to see whether you are a victim of ADHD or not, so I can tell you one exercise. Go home, sit in front of TV. Take the remote in your hands. And if in five minutes, you are changing 10 channels, so you have this ADHD. Why? Because when you cannot focus, multiple things come to your mind. And this is one of the reasons uh, we are not at peace. And whenever we start offering prayers in one rakat, mostly we have five to seven thoughts, multiple type of things. They come to our brain. We start thinking a lot of things. And then suddenly we realize that our prayers are namaz, our worship is over. So ADHD basically, it's very, very uh, most of the people, you when you cannot control your behavior, you become victim of the same. And I tell you one thing, psychological issues are the issues. The more psychological patient you are, the more you think, I am not. If you read uh, the story by Edgar Allan Poe, uh, Tell Tale Heart, he says that I actually don't know how the idea entered my brain, but once it conceived, it haunted me day and night. And when he is killing the old man, for seven continuous nights, he goes and he doesn't kill the old man. Why? Because he thinks the eye is closed and I is my enemy. And every day, and then, you know, he tells to the, uh, tells us, he tells this thing to us, the readers, that you consider I am mad. I am not mad. If I tell you the way I killed the old man, you will never consider me mad. You will never reckon me mad. 
I mean, according to him, killing a person is not medicine, uh, is not madness, but the way of killing is wisdom. So these are basically the paradoxes that these psychological issues, uh, you know, tell us, reflect uh, these kind of things. So in ADHD, basically, you cannot focus, you cannot attend things, you cannot listen to things properly because you give attention to one, then to the next, then to the next, then to the next. And this is how you uh, perform. And in hyperactivity, basically, hyper, you are hyper in performing certain things. You want to do a lot of things in one time. You are doing one thing, so you are no, 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 this is not good. Let's move to the other one. Okay. Then we have Down syndrome. Down syndrome, basically, uh, it's again a uh, neurological disorder. Uh, where it is an addition, whenever there is an addition of the a copy of chromosome 21, because of that you face this problem. People, they never grow beyond 7, 8 to 10 years of age. They remain immature. They cannot perform well in society. They cannot do their own things. And same is their language. And finally, if we talk about we have autism, we have autism. So in autism, say uh, children, whenever their neurons are developing, their neurodevelopmental activity, uh, they do not have pragmatic understanding of social interaction. I mean, socially they cannot interact with people. 